Merry Christmas, London Riverside Church. We are very excited that we get to celebrate this day with you. In fact, why don't you put some emojis in the group chats, the Christmas tree, Father Christmas, the presents, anything associated with this day. We are so very excited that we get to celebrate uh, the day of Jesus' birth. And we're gonna have a time of worship in this moment. In fact, just to let you know that this service is gonna be completely different to what we normally do. So get ready and enjoy what's to come. Hallelujah. 
guys, it is Christmas Day, but you already knew that. I am here to host today our normal Christmas game. Now, we can't be in person, but we are online, as you know, so we have moved the game online. So, we are going to play a very simple game with the pastors and leaders of this church. It is called Rock, Paper, Scissors, yeah? Scissors, yeah? And we're going to go to different people's houses, we're going to knock on their door, keep it COVID safe of course, and each leader or pastor will play them once and then we will tally the scores and whoever loses will get pied in the face by yours truly, John Right, I'm going to pie them in the face and I'm so excited to do that. Our contestants today, we have six of them. The first one, the tallest man alive, Martin Smith. Give him a cheer. Woo Number two, we have Muscles Upon Muscles, Reginald Awali E. Exactly. I'm very, really excited for this. Number three, we have the big dog himself, Dr. Gowan Wheeler. Very excited. I hope it's him that gets pied in the face, but don't let him know. Number four is the very tenacious, see what I did there, Abby Dada. Very excited for her potentially to get pied in the face as well. We also have the silent but deadly Martin over Rary. And last but not least is the man that smiles for days, is passionate. Fun fact, he has been studying the origin of rock, paper, scissors. You didn't hear it from me. It is Ade Ayoko. So guys, before we start this, let us know in the comments, in the live chat, who you think will win. Don't skip to the end yet. Who is gonna win the rock, paper, scissors challenge? Are you ready? Rock, paper, scissors, go. So guys, I've interrupted the video because I don't know if you spotted something, but let's just go back a minute and I'm going to put it in slow motion for you. Now, yeah, can you see it? No, not yet. He moves his fingers back in. Now, that is something at the LRC Christmas Day game that we do not accept. We do not accept cheating. And now I'm not here to give any rulings. All I'm saying, Ade, is there will be a punishment to fit the crime. So it's not gonna happen now, might not happen next week, but there will be a punishment. Okay, guys, let's move on. Whoever loses is still the loser, but Ade, there will be a punishment. Come on! Rock, 
never see the shoot. Oh, sorry. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, ow! Oh. So guys, it is the end of Rock, Paper, Scissors Challenge and we have two people in last place. As you can see behind me, we have Martin Overeri and we have Reg in last place. So they are gonna face each other in a best of three. Best of three. Whoever loses this will get pied in the face. Go for it, guys. Three, two, one, go. Oh, that is one nil to Martin Overeri. Uh, the irony of it. I get pied in the face and now I'm hosting this Christmas Day service. Got to love our church. In fact, you know, during this time we normally would uh, play some games and uh, have some fun, but we just want to say a massive, massive thank you and honour every single person who's been on the front line during this time. If we could, we would honour every single one of you. Uh, but we thought we should honour some people within our church and show some love and kindness towards them. Let's watch this clip. Uh, now we've made our way to Agatha and Joshua's house and we'd like to honour them as a leadership and of course on behalf of the church. Uh, Agatha works as a nurse in a local hospital and Joshua has suffered another stroke this year. And so we just really want to honour them because they've been so courageous through 2020 and uh, not only in the place of work but in their home life they've just known the goodness of God despite the difficulties that they've been facing. You okay? Yeah, I'm alright. So we wanted to we wanted to honour you, oh, honour you both for yeah. being so courageous this last year. Oh, thanks a lot. Thank I know you. not just only your job, but the fact for, as a family and caring for Joshua and yeah. helping him okay, through. I can't wait to be on the camera. That's great. So Joshua, we we're just saying we wanted to honour you both this Christmas time. Uh, you've both been very courageous through the year. So we're gonna we're gonna pray with you. Okay, Martin, you're. Yeah. It's in okay. So, uh, Father, we, we thank you for Joshua, Lord. We thank you for uh, the family. We thank you for the example they are to us, uh, how they're caring and helping. And uh, we do pray for Joshua, Lord. We pray your grace and your peace be with him. Uh, we pray you comfort his heart and mind and give him peace and rest. And uh, we do pray, Lord, for his, his physical body, Lord Jesus. We, we pray, Lord, that you continue your healing in him and uh, particularly in the new year we may say him see him back to full health we commit this great family to you in jesus name amen amen hi everyone i'm outside the house of ken and carol payne today and the senior leadership team is with me because we are here to bless and honor ken today is his 80th birthday. Now you may not know this but Ken has served in London Riverside Church for many years. He was a treasurer, he was on the eldership, the leadership team of the time, he served in the Watoto project. So many different ways in which he's invested his life into the church that we love and enjoy today. So we've come to his doorstep, we've got a great Christmas hamper that we're going to place there. We're going to keep our distance but we're going to pray and we're going to bless him and honour him from the leadership team but also on your behalf as a church. We want this to be a very special day for them.
Merry Christmas everyone. I'm so pleased that you've been able to join us on this Christmas uh, morning or this Christmas day whenever you happen to be watching and uh, I trust you're having a great time celebrating in any way that you're able to. It's been a very different Christmas for everyone. I'm sure you'll agree. Now I've got a question for you. What kind of present, what kind of Christmas gift unwrapper are you? I wonder what kind you are. Are you the kind of uh, 
present unwrapper who is a, a guesser? Do you spend days, even weeks maybe beforehand, eyeing up that present and guessing what's in it? Maybe you're a pre-shaker. You've got to move it around, jiggle it around and just try to guess from the shape, the size or even the sound that it's making. There are those uh, among you I know who are pre-shakers when it comes to opening your Christmas presents. Some of us are very methodical. I've seen some people open presents. I won't mention who in my family, but it's step by step. And even the wrapping paper is folded afterwards. I don't know what kind of strange uh, thing that is, but some do it. Others are just completely reckless and just got to rip all the paper off and see what's inside. We all unwrap differently. We all unwrap our presents differently. I wonder what kind you are. But let's be real honest. I mean, really, it doesn't matter how you unwrap as long as you unwrap your gifts. But I wonder if we're honest, what are your expectations when you read the gift tag? Oh, ouch. This could be a bit too honest. You know something you read there? From mum, from your brother, from the work colleague who felt obliged to buy you something. What's your, what, do you, what do you expect when you read the gift tag? What are your expectations? I wonder what your expectation would be if the gift tag said God on it. You say, this is from God. You think, well, I don't know if I want to open that. I I don't even believe he wrote, I I think he got someone else to write that for him. Maybe your understanding of God is like, well, I'm not sure what kind of gift he would give me. You know, in our Christmas card that went out from the church this year, we had this scripture, a well-known Christmas scripture from Luke chapter 2 and verse 14. It's where the shepherds were informed of Christ's birth and the angels uh, said, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. And I just want to very briefly, this Christmas day, uh, remind us of the gift that God has given and offered to each one of us. And that is his peace and favour. God's peace and favour can be ours this Christmas. You see, God's peace is a gift. Our understanding of peace is so conditional. It's all about the pandemic being over. It's about war ceasing. It's about that trouble uh, somehow being removed. It's very much to do with our circumstance and and the situation we find ourselves. But listen, God's peace is not the absence of difficulty, but the presence of God. That's what brings peace into our lives. That's the gift of peace that we can all experience. It's not the absence of difficulty, but the presence of God. And I want to encourage you because Ephesians chapter 2 puts it like this. In verse 14 it says, for he himself, Jesus himself, is our peace. You see we often think peace is something that's sung about at this time of year. Peace is something that, yeah of course we all want peace, peace on earth. But actually the Bible says that he himself, Jesus, is our peace. It's a person. It's someone who we can know and follow. Jesus actually said these words in John chapter 14. He said to his disciples before he left this earth in verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, there's sometimes we yearn for something, but often we don't realize that it's in the person of Jesus that we experience the peace that we're yearning for. It's not the absence of difficulty, but it's the presence of God in our lives. And you know, each one of us this Christmas time, we need that supernatural exchange. We need to be able to exchange our fears and our concerns for the peace that God gives us. It actually says in the scripture, if we bring our needs and our concerns and the things that are troubling us to him, that he will give us a peace that is beyond our understanding. It actually he'll guard our hearts and minds. That's the the supernatural element to following God that we all need. This is a gift from God. I wonder if you will unwrap that gift. I know it's got God's name on the name tag and you're thinking, well, I'm not so sure I want what he's sending me. He's got peace for us at this Christmas time. Jesus often said to people when he'd help them, he'd say to them, go in peace. This is more than simply a a Jewish saying or a Jewish sentiment, but it means that we go in God's peace. It's not striving to gain peace, to fix things so that it works for us, but it's an attitude of life. It's it's, it's, It's something that God actually does supernaturally in our experience. Go in peace. 
as we come to the end of this year and into the next, we need the peace of God. I want to encourage us that we that have received that gift of peace in our lives are those that also bring that peace to others. It's something that we carry to others. Go in peace. That's one of the gifts that the angels announced. That's one of the gifts that Jesus is to us. He himself is our peace. Now also in this short scripture, not only do they proclaim peace on earth to those on whom his favour rests. So he speaks of God's favour. You know, like un some, unlike someone else at Christmas time who is uh, making a list, checking it twice, seeing if anybody's been naughty or nice, you know who I'm talking about. That's not the picture of God. God is always looking for ways to get his gifts to us. And you think, yeah, but I'm not, I haven't been good enough. I'm not worthy. That, God's not hearing you. He's insistent. He wants to get his gift to you. He wants to show you his favour in Christ. You see, a lot of this has to do with our picture of God. It has to do with how we understand God to be. Is he an angry God? Is he an angry father? Then of course he hasn't got anything prepared that's good for us. Of course he doesn't want to show us his favour if he's an angry God. Or maybe he's simply, well, there is a God, but he's pretty absent in my life. May, I, can't, I can't say for 100% that there's no God, but he's definitely absent in my experience. He's probably busy with the religious people. He's busy with those that are interested. He's, he, he's not got time for me. He's a busy father and he's not interested. And so often when we think that of God, we don't expect the good things that he's trying to give us. But the proclamation this Christmas and that Christmas time, the first Christmas, was that he brings peace and his favour is upon us. The favour of God. The favour of God is God's mercy and his grace. You know, it's a very simple way of understanding the mercy and the grace of God. Mercy is when I don't get what I deserve. It's when I'm spared the consequences of the things that I've done wrong. When I don't get what I deserve, that's God's mercy. But God's grace is when I do get what I don't deserve. It's the favour of God towards us that we, so often we get caught into a trap where we're, am I worthy enough? Have I done enough to deserve this? You know, when we think of giving somebody a gift, they say, oh yeah, they're a good person, they deserve it. And often we, we go through life calculating uh, what others deserve, what we deserve in that way, but God's way beyond that. God is way beyond that in how he sees us as his creation, as his children. He wants to show us his favour. He has shown us his favour in sending Christ. And so that is a gift to each one of us this Christmas time, the favour of God, that I get what I don't deserve and I don't get what I do deserve. The favour of God. Now I wonder, how confident a giver are you? You know when you hand over that Christmas present and you say to somebody, yeah, but I kept the receipt just in case. Yeah, or you kind of say, well, I like it. I hope you like it too. And sometimes we're very nervous about handing over that gift. Others of us are very confident because we think it's great. So you better like it anyway. I don't know how you give your gifts, but God is a confident giver. God has provided Jesus for us. His gift of peace and favour in our lives. And God is confident that this will work. God is confident. He didn't keep the receipt in case this doesn't work. He's sure that this is going to work in your life. He gave himself. Christ came, lived amongst us, and ultimately went to the cross in our place. So he knew that the gift of life was Jesus, and that is what we need. So I want to encourage each of us today. I'm going to keep this short, but I want us to consider this Christmas message, that Jesus brings that peace because he is our peace. He's not in short supply of peace for your experience today. He's not in short supply for the peace that we need in our circumstances. But instead of trying so desperately to switch everything around, we need to recognise that the peace is not the absence of difficulty, but the presence of God in our lives. And we can have that if we receive his gift. In the story where the shepherds are told of Christ's birth, it says in verse 15 that when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And that's, I just want to follow their example today. I want us to see this thing that has happened, not just to hear about Christmas, not just to, to celebrate it with everybody else, but to go see for ourselves 
to receive his peace for ourselves, to know his favour in our lives for ourselves. And I encourage you to do that today. Maybe you've been following Jesus for quite some time, but let me remind you that his peace is available because he himself is our peace. Let me remind you that you walk in his favour today. Even though you are sometimes confused by your circumstance, the favour of God is upon you because of what Christ has accomplished. And maybe you're listening in and, and you're thinking, actually, I don't really know G Jesus in that way. I don't have the confidence to talk about God in the way that you're explaining that God loves me. Then you can receive that gift today. I encourage you this Christmas day, receive the gift of peace and God's favour in your life. It's because Christ went to the cross, because ultimately he took the punishment for that which we've done wrong, that we can stand before God and enjoy his favour in our lives. Don't just look at the gift tag and think, I'm not sure if that's any good. No, no, none of you would think that, but hey, let's be real honest. Don't just look at the gift tag that God has given and think, well, I'm not so sure if that's for me. Open it up and receive all that God has for you. Let me lead us in a short prayer. Father, we thank you for your favour upon our lives. We thank you for the gift of Christ. We thank you for that peace that actually passes all understanding. And I ask now, Lord Jesus, for every home, for every person listening and watching today, that they will know your peace, that they will experience your favour. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, just one last thing. Maybe you're, you're listening in and you're saying, I need to pray a prayer to follow Jesus. I need to receive that gift from Jesus today. Let me lead you in a very simple prayer. Just repeat these words after me. And you know, Lord God is listening in and he will respond to the prayer that comes from your heart today. Father God, I thank you for your love towards me. I choose to receive Jesus this Christmas time. I choose to receive your forgiveness and invite you to lead me that I might know your peace and your favour on my life. Amen. Well, if you decided to follow Jesus, then why don't you head over to our website, the Jesus page in particular, where there's more information that will take you on the steps that you need to go in following Jesus. In fact, follow us on all our social media platforms. We are very excited that we get to celebrate Christmas. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy the turkey, the lamb, the gammon, the fish, the pork, uh, the ribs, whatever you're having. Enjoy some. In fact, maybe give me some and we'll see each other soon.